It's pole day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and already we have had 29 cars take times and establish themselves in the field for the 90th running of the Indianapolis 500. Pole day. For 90 years, drivers have defied the laws of nature. Dare the distance. Track record. Four laps, 10 miles flat out. The race to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. Pole day. The first race before the big race. Where seconds seem like an eternity. And drivers hold their breath knowing one mistake could cost them the prestigious pole. Will the new Ganassi driver, Dan Weldon, relive his past Indy glory? Celebrate victory at Indianapolis. Or will this year's hero, Casco Nevis, start from the front row? Michael Andretti slowing down. Can Michael Andretti, coming out of retirement, win his first pole and his elusive Indianapolis 500? Or will this be the year for Danica Patrick, who last year saw her Indy pole dreams vanish with just one slight mistake? It's Pole Day, live from the Brickyard. It's the four most gut-wrenching laps a driver can ever face. It's pole day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the 90th running of the Indianapolis 500. And we have had a lot of excitement already throughout the day, but the best may be yet to come because the overcast is moving in. Let's get you caught up, and you'll notice it's Sam Hornish Jr. sitting on pole right now. Just a tick under 229 miles an hour. His teammate, Elio Castroneves, right alongside of him. Think about this, they're separated by 67 one hundredths of a second after 10 miles of qualifying. Scott Dixon, target Chip Ganassi racing. Dixon in the number four position right now, a 226 average, and his teammate Dan Weldon, the man who won it all last year, he's sitting on the outside of row number one right now. Are they licking their chops, getting ready for another run to try and bump Hornish off? And what about Danica Patrick? She ran her four best laps of the entire month at the right time. She put her car in the number 10 position. All right, let's bring in Scott Goodyear and Rusty Wallace. Take a look at the rest of this starting grid. Scott, anybody jump out at you? Well, very impressive. We knew that the target Chip Ganassi and Penske guys were going to be very fast this month. The top four spaces going to them. But Vitor Mira seems to be a bit of a surprise in sixth. I like Tony Kanani. He's in fifth place right now. He looks real strong out there, real solid. But I'll tell you what, right now, Hornish is in a different zip code. He's flying. And you saw the R's by the name of our rookies, Marco Andretti, the best on the outside of row number three in the number nine spot. Townsend Bell says he may pull his time out and come back for another attempt because he wants that rookie honor. There is the line. Here are the guys that have yet to qualify. And notice the big name at the top, Dario Franchitti. They had a problem right in the middle of their first qualifying effort. It was the only run to be aborted. Let's get more from Jamie Little. That's right, Marty. You know, we originally heard that it was something maybe in the gearbox, but I just spoke to the team. They said nothing had broken in the gearbox. What had happened is they were having some weird RPM spikes. They brought it in, realized they had blown up the engine, so they were issued a new engine. They just put it in the car. Their plan of attack right now is to get Dario out on the track, get some laps under his belt, and they're going to put him back out there and go for their qualifying run. Vince? Sam Hornish Jr. currently on pole here at Indianapolis. His idol as a youngster was arguably the greatest qualifier ever here at the 500, Rick Mears. This would be your first pole at Indy. Mears won it six times. Put in perspective what winning pole at Indianapolis would mean to you. Um, it's the second best thing compared to winning the race. So, uh, you know, it, it means a lot to me. I uh, really look forward to a, a day when I could come here and sometime challenge for the pole. This is the first of, of the times that I've actually thought that, you know, had a good shot at it. So. We're uh, pretty happy about how today it's gone so far. Just uh, still got our fingers crossed and hold our breath a little bit. Your team is 1-2 with Elio Castroneves second. Uh, would you have settled for anything less as a team today? 
Well, I mean, some days you have to settle for whatever it is, but you know, we knew that we had a really good. Uh, you know, both cars were pretty good, so we we're just really excited about the fact that you know both cars are there right now. Uh, and you know, the big thing for us is just to make sure that we stay where we're at. He said he told his team 229.2. That was his target speed, almost 228.985. Jamie? Yeah, when he got out of the car earlier, he acted almost disappointed with that time. But the only other man to turn that 228 is his teammate, Elio Castroneves. And Elio, you're sitting second right now, but we're hearing some people say you might go out there knowing you, you're going to want to go for the pole. Are we going to see you back in the car? Well, obviously, um, Sam will put up very strong time. Um, we want to make sure that the track come back to the same way it was this morning. Right now it's a little bit warm and we still like an hour. I know it's a little risk, but um, we want to we want to play the game. Everybody's playing the game right now, even not, not only us, but the Ganassi guys. So uh, we're playing the game. All right, Jack. Well, they're looking for the track to cool down just a bit more to see if these guys go for a second run. Well, Jamie, the track has already cooled by about approximately 10 degrees from when all those runs were held. So we're playing what I like to call high stakes poker here. And the team that may have to go all in, Mike Hull calls the shots for the Chip Ganassi target team. And uh, Mike, you guys have been practicing Scott Dixon and Dan Weldon, who were both obviously disappointed with their qualifying efforts as compared to Team Penske. Now all of a sudden you're taping these cars up and it looks like we put them back in qualifying trim. What are you up to? Well, first of all, we're very proud of what our guys have done here, dodging the raindrops all, all week with the speed they have. So the effort today has been awesome. Uh, we're really excited about next Sunday. That, that's going to be big for us, we think, with both target cars. But the reality of what happens this afternoon is that big speed is the coolest thing in the world. Four laps at these speeds, when you're able to do it, is what anybody in their lifetime, if they've ever been around motor racing, wants to do. So we've got an hour to find out if we can still do something. I've been watching throughout the course of the afternoon while the track was open for practice, guys, and Dan Weldon has not at all been happy. A little antsy staying with uh, Andy Brown and his engineering team. And a point, Rusty Wallace. Check this out. Normally, Chip Ganassi would already be in his corporate jet on his way to watch his NASCAR teams compete at Lowe's Motor Speedway in the All-Star Race. He's here, too, so that ought to tell you something. Well, Chip is a very, very competitive guy, especially when it comes to Roger Penske. He's got two great cars here. He's got wonderful teams. They've been well prepared this whole week. Chip wants that pole real bad, if, if, and he definitely wants the second spot if he can't get the pole, so he's not a quitter. I, I expect him to uh, put up a gunfight with these guys. Well, I think you got a taste of it from Mike Hall. In other words, they're proud of what their team's done. If they have to settle for third and fourth on the starting grid, they will, guys. But <laughs> that big but, the clouds are moving in, and you noticed it earlier. You were saying the conditions could ripen, it, and it could just be ideal. You know, once the sun starts to go down just a little bit and the cooler track temperatures start to come into play, the wind is non-existent right now, which is perfect because when you have a wind of one nature going down to the t turn one or turn three, you end up with a tailwind somewhere. You have a compromise on the car at one end of the racetrack. You'll never get a fast time, but the conditions are getting to be perfect right now. And the other thing, too, remember, we used to have this happy hour from five to six. Well, with daylight savings time change, now it's really six to seven so maybe conditions will not be as best as they have been in previous years but still probably getting just about as perfect as they were this morning guys and I think that you're gonna see a few of these guys take a chance and pull out a line and the other side of that too Dario Franchitti maybe this plays into his hand because right now the conditions are getting better than they were at his a, a slot of time that he had going on earlier today all right we see Dan Weldon and bringing it back in I want to shift gears for a moment let's go back to Dario Franchitti he is our last big name guy out there that isn't in this field now you've got a brand new engine. Uh, 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 they're basically interchangeable according to Honda, and that's been pretty much the case. You can, can't really complain about that. But as a driver, here we go into the last hour. You don't want to be a second day, a bump day qualifier. Rusty, take us through what he's going through. Well, he's running out of time. That's for sure, Marty. I've, I've always thought that uh, Dario was going to be right after the front with the rest of these guys. And I think what's going to go on right now, Dario's going to have to go out there, make sure he's got a solid car. And I really believe he's got a, a, a top 10 speed in him. Uh, the engines are identical. Everybody's telling me, hardly any different whatsoever. But uh, there are a couple guys got to get back in this race, and Dario's one of them. Now, talking back up to the front row again, you know, Hornets has definitely got a heck of a speed he's put up. Uh, you know, 
I, I'm not much in the believe in that the Ganassi guys, even though they got wonderful teams, are up to speed to grab that pole. That's an awful fast time Hornish laid out. And Weldon's not happy, so right, out, right away, he's not in a good mood for the way his car's been running. Uh, again, Marty, I, I believe I'd take these babies and, and be happy with it. Everybody only talks about the pole winner. They're not talking about second or third. This isn't a big media thing, and they get a, need to get clear on that. All right, uh, here's Dario as he comes across the strike. We're going to get an idea how his practice speed is, and uh, I'm looking up on the board. His last lap, about 223 and change, so uh, that's not even going to come close to getting anywhere near the uh, first three rows if he can't find some more speed. And hey Marty, we're talking about the motor change that he just did. It's really known throughout this whole garage area right now that the motors do need a few miles to break in. They're actually saying that almost 300 miles before the motors get to be about perfect. So if this is a brand new motor, he's not going to get the best out of it right now for this qualifying run. And the yellow has come out. That's why Dario has uh, taken it into the pit lane. You saw his lap there, 223 and change. If that was the run he would put up, uh, it would put him in row number six. That's not what he wants. They'll work on it. He's still got time. All right, don't go anywhere because one half hour after the qualifying closes, we'll be back with a three-hour primetime special right here from Indianapolis on pole day. As we've got uh, Roger Penske. Boy, you talk about a guy who has had success at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You're looking at him, the captain. Now, these are the numbers coming into this year, guys. 13 wins, 12 pulls. He could go to 13-13 by the end of today. Well, I think 13 still is lucky for Roger Penske, but if anybody's going to have an opportunity to win this event again, it's got to be one of either Penske or Ganassi for sure this weekend, guys. All right, let's send it down to Jamie Little. Well, Roger Penske walking around Elio Castroneves' car, checking in from all angles. Roger, we see Elio get back in the seat. What is your plan right now? Well, right now, we're just kind of waiting to see what Ganassi does from the standpoint. If they get in and would go quicker, Elio wants to jump back in, so we'll wait and see. Right now, we're just in a holding pattern. So even though he's sitting second right now, you'd let him go out and go for the pole? Well, you know, Elio, you know, he doesn't want to be third or fourth, but uh, I think we need to be smart here and just wait and see what happens. All right, good luck going for your 14th win and your 13th pole. Roger Penske hits. And Jamie, so Roger Penske is waiting to see what this man Chip Ganassi does. Chip Ganassi, are you waiting to see what Roger Penske does? No, they actually, Jack, we're you know we're we're just out here now making trying to protect our position. We want to make sure nobody behind us does anything crazy. And uh, you know, I think that obviously that pole is going to be awful hard to eclipse for anybody. And uh, it does seem to be cooling down now, though. So we have to put our cars back in qualifying trim and make sure no one tries to get us from behind. You're a former driver. You know the feeling of disappointment that can go with underachievement, even as good as Dan Weldon and, and Scott Dixon, his teammates, have performed against Team Penske. I've watched Danny now all afternoon, and he's like a cat on a hot tin roof, not at all satisfied with what happened. No, he's not satisfied. I mean, we, we ran fifth gear, and he was on the rev limiter for, for quite a bit of time on the back straightaway uh, on all four of the laps. So we're, we're just trying to get ourselves to where we can run sixth gear and uh, hopefully with this cool down of temperature, we'll be able to do that. We want to see where we're at with that package. Again, uh, you know, Roger doesn't have anything to worry about. I mean, we just want to make sure we don't get caught from behind. Fellas, I think that's the key. Just like in football, sometimes you've got to play offense and sometimes you've got to play defense. Right now for Target Chip Ganassi, it's all about the guys that might overtake him. So they're heavy on the D. Yeah, but I'm going to keep an eye on the O because I think that if it gets cooler, they're going to go for it. All right, let's get you caught up on Marco Andretti because right now he is qualified in the number nine position, the top rookie, and guys, he out-qualified dad. Uh, very impressive. You know, just on Sports Center yesterday, Rusty and I had a little question here whether who would be ahead of him. I picked Michael and you picked Marco in, in qualifying, so I think, oh, you want steak dinner on that one. Well, right. We've had a little bit of rivalry going the whole time about Marco and Michael Scott, so uh, hey, we both won a little bit back and forth there. All right, here was Michael's run from earlier today, and you can see he was at 224 and a half for his four lap average. W were you able to notice anything different about the, the two runs between? Uh, very consistent for Michael, something that you would expect, and I think he probably has a little bit more downforce on the car than he maybe needed to actually go out there and try and run fast, but I don't think that's where his head's at. I think he really knew that that was sort of a way for him. He wasn't going to maybe be able to get any further up ahead from where he was, and he just said, you know something, I'll go out there and run a, run a race car and qualifying, basically. 
So uh, there's also another legend that returned to the Brickyard this year besides Michael Andretti. His name just happens to be Al Unser Jr. He is a two-time winner, and they've been struggling just to try and get up to speed. And uh, you can see right there, he is currently qualified 26, Rusty. Al Unser Jr. just needs all the time in this racetrack he can get. He's driving good. He's definitely a champ, and we all know that. But he just needs to get this team up to speed more yet. Uh, you know, they're gonna, they, he's very comfortable saying that, okay, look, I have forgot about qualifying. I can't hit the wall. I can't do anything stupid tomorrow. I got to get this thing in the field, keep it in the field, and then next weekend try to get all the practice he can to try to get more speed out of the car so it's better in the 500. We're under a yellow right now as you uh, continue to watch Al's run from earlier today. The reason was they found a cut tire on Max Pappas's number 52 machine. It gives us a chance to explain to you and show you the first attempts by father and son in the same year. Jim and James McElreath back in 77. And uh, James failed to qualify that year. And there's the rest of the combinations. Mario and Michael in 84. Mario and Jeff in 91. And now Michael and Marco here in 2006. In fact, I think Jamie Little is with Marco. That's right, Marco Andretti is here. He got his qualifying run out of the way and he put it on the third row in ninth position. Marco, I just asked you about your nerves. We talked to you earlier. How are you feeling right now? Um, I don't know. I, I was all right for a little bit, but now I think, uh, unfortunately, I think Townsend's going to get me and that's, I'm worried about the rookie deal a little bit. Um, you know, he's been pretty quick all month and, and I think he's going to have a, another go at it. So I think, uh, you know, he might be able to bump me, but, you know, I think we should look forward to the race. And, and fortunately now we only have one thing to worry about, and that's the race. So we'll go for it. Well, Townsend Bell and Marco Andretti, they're two of the five rookies for this year. I know you're going for the chase, but Marco, Townsend would have to make up at least six positions, I believe, to beat you. What if he comes out here? Are you going to throw on your driver's suit and get back out there? I don't think so, no. I. Uh, what does dad say? No, he says no way. No, he'd get mad if I do. I, I would. I was thinking about it, but uh, by then it's too late. I mean, you, we needed to make the decision a while ago, but uh, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. By the way, what Dad say when you uh, beat him in qualifying? No, he just said it was a good run. I mean, he, he didn't come here for the pole. He came here to win the race. So, and and if you look at his his past. Uh, Look at his career, he never qualifies that good, he, he's, but he's always up there in the race, sometimes leading the second lap, so we'll see what happens. All right, his son, Marco Andretti, 19 years old, starting in his first Indianapolis 500. Marty? Yeah, Dad, Michael, his best qualifying ever, third back in 1986. That's Dan Weldon. Will he go or won't he? Come back and find out. Back at Indianapolis, that's Dario Franchitti, his wife Ashley Judd alongside, and just as we show him, he stops and pulls away. <laughs> what? Where are you going, hun? Come on back here. He's going to talk to Michael Andretti, and let's talk a little drag racing because the Pontiac Performance Nationals, boy, qualifying last night, they reset seven of eight track records. What will happen tonight? You'll see it all. Ten Eastern, seven Pacific, and then don't forget, final eliminations tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN2 HD. Let's get caught up with Jamie Little. Well, we have Dario Franchitti. We're walking up. His car is in tech now. And Dario, what a day you guys have had so far. I think you just got a few laps with the new engine. How are you feeling right now about your chances? I think we can get it in the field. I don't know how far up we can get it. I'm really discouraged with the pace of the car right now. Um, we've been struggling all week with it, but we've seen some glimmers of hope. And right now, we're, uh, if we can do mid-224s, we'll be happy. We saw you just stop and uh, say hi to your boss. What did he say to you? He said, how is it? And I told him, <laughs> short conversation. <laughs> Which, that's why we saw the faces we did. Dario Franchitti getting ready to go. Vince? Well, a lot of hand-wringing are going on right now in the Vision Racing Pit area. Thomas Schechter, you see him there with his back turn talking with the engineer, David Cripps. Schechter currently sits 11th on the grid, but before Schechter would go out, we possibly will see Townsend Bell, who is currently 16th, but qualified about a mile and a half slower than what he had been running laps uh, throughout the course of the day. And I'm with team manager Larry Curry. Larry, first of all, will you put Townsend out for another qualifying run? Yeah, I think that's what uh, we pretty much the general consensus is that, you know, we're a competitive group and um, we feel we're better than what we posted and uh, uh, Townsend, Townsend wants to do it, the team wants to do it, so we're going to give it a shot. And what about Thomas Schechter? Well, we'd certainly like to. Don't be political now. I know that. I know he's over here begging. Well, no, he is. He's lobbying really hard, but uh, we'll go work on this 90 first and then we'll decide. 
I would anticipate the 90 and then the two of Thomas Schechter because as you see he is in deep discussion trying to get the rest of the uh, gang on board with his vision. Well, the Vision Racing Group, Thomas is 11th, Ed Carpenter 12th, and Townsend Bell 16th. And when we come back, there is Dario Franchitti getting ready to climb in. He is coming up to qualify. The drama continues to build here on pole day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Dario Franchitti is in the cockpit of his car. Final preparations, and we're going to... Listen in with Brian Barnhart, who will give him his instructions. Brian, the president of the Indy Racing League. And Brian hasn't ducked down in. That's Brian on the left there. So until he makes a move. Guys, uh, you've been through this, Scott. Even though it's his second attempt today, you still have a lot of butterflies in your stomach when you go out. I mean, we talked about it. It's the four most gut-wrenching laps you can spend. Well, the, the key thing is you have to get every lap right, and that's the most important thing. Usually when you go out and have a qualifying attempt in most racing series around the world, you get two laps, and it's the best of two laps. Here, it's all four combined for that 10 miles. Here goes Sorry, Brian. It'll be second attempt on this one. Same procedure, second time by on four good ones. Go in there and give me some goons. All right. When you're ready, Poppy. 502 to control. Do I have a clearance? 10 4 copy. We're getting ready to start engines. Motor Speedway. He will have two warm-up laps. The second time by, he gets the green flag. Four laps later, we'll determine where he is in this field. We have 29 cars that have already qualified. You know, you think about the Andretti Green Racing Team right now with Marco leading the charge so far. A lot of frustration throughout that whole team for this past week, Rusty. And this right now is just added on to it with his qualifying attempt earlier and then not being able to complete it. All the drivers want to come here, get this job done, and then turn around and just clear your mind and start thinking about the race. See, he's not been able to do that yet. Well, Dario's a pretty cool guy. He's a... He's a pretty calm fellow. They got 35 minutes yet to go in this qualifying effort. And uh, he's got plenty of time. This motor's gonna come up to 10,300 RPM shortly. He's gonna take his qualifying attempt. Our baby's gonna hold on to it, and that's gonna be it. You saw a momentary look at Tony George. We have been informed, he just told Brian Barnhart he is withdrawing the time established by Townsend Bell on the 90 car. So that means they are gonna go take another run at it. Tony, of course, the owner of Vision Racing, that three-car effort. Here we go as we get ready now for Dario Franchitti. So important to get up to speed, as you mentioned, Rusty, coming out on those warm-up laps. And I think that was the thing that Sam Hornish did so well. He was flat on the gas as soon as he left pit lane. I've never seen anybody else today go ahead and do that. Well, Hornish was amped up. He was ready to go. He just really wanted to get after it. You could tell that he was going for that pole Hornish was. He was fired up. And just like you said, everybody else hasn't been that rambunctious as Hornish was. All right, you see the graphic at the bottom of the screen. The time to pull on the upper portion, that means with the minus sign, he is actually behind by that margin from Paul, Sam Hornish's 228.985 into turn number three. Flat out on the throttle, 100%. You can see that number just continuing to grow. Now that 222 number in the turns to 221, we saw that about 227 for Hornish and two, 232 down the straightaway. What will be here? And the first lap speed, 223.637 miles an hour. Right now, that would put him in the middle of row number six. And that's about exactly where they came off the track just 10 minutes ago in practice. Even though we feel the track conditions are a little better right now than they were maybe earlier on today, we'll have to see if they'll be happy with this and take it. There is a tad of irony here. Middle of row six is the 16th starting spot. Guess who started there last year? There you go. Dan Weldon went on to win the race. I don't really think it means a lot where you start in this field. Pain of truth, Marty. I think these guys can draft themselves up to the front. This speed's a little off of what Dario thought he was going to have, but hey, it's mid-pack, and I, he's just going to take what he gets right now. 223.34 on his second lap. He said he'd be happy if it was a 224 and a half. He's about a mile an hour off, but still, not worth losing sleep over. 
So Dario Franchitti now on his third lap. You can see he continues to lose time in relationship to Sam Hornish. The pole is far gone. All he's worried about right now is putting it solidly in the field. And let's explain a little bit why everybody wants to start up in the first couple of rows. After you're off for a week and you come and start the Indianapolis 500, you rush down to turn one at 220 miles an hour and try to get through turn one. If you're in the first couple of rows, a lot of times you get through any accidents that might happen. So that's the key thing for wanting to be up front and qualifying. And Dario has slowed now, 223.271. Not a lot, still in the same range. Would put him 17th on the starting grid. You know, when you put a brand new engine in these cars, it takes a little bit of a time to break him in, I would think, Marty. You know, we can take them off the dyno. They can run all you can. You then make big power to the dyno. You put them in a car, still they loosen up a little bit. They make a little bit more power when everything seats in. To put a brand new engine in the car and go out and say qualify for the Indy 500 is a little bit unfair. And, uh, hey, they had a problem and they had their Delta Cards yard right now. So I, that might be slowing the car up a little bit. Checkered flag flies, another lap, 223.125, his four-lap average, 223.345. Currently, that puts him 17th on the starting grid for this year's running of the Indianapolis 500. So, Stario cools it down. Michael Andretti suiting up. Is Michael going to come out? Jamie, is, you got more? Well, he just put his helmet on and they brought his car out. Michael, there's a couple more cars down there that are looking to go out and qualify. Are you going to do the same? No, no, we're just going to work on some race stuff. It just took us a while to turn our car around, so uh, hopefully we'll get a couple laps just to get a feel for it. We just saw Townsend Bell, though, withdrew his time. He's going to go back out and try to beat Marco for that fastest rookie. Are you going to let Marco go back out today? Uh, we, we decided we'd stay with his time, whatever it is. And it'd be a shame if he beat him because, you know, it's going to be a different condition now. But, hey, the way it is. Marty? All right, thanks, Jamie. As uh, Michael gets ready to climb into the car, that's a winner's ring. A.J. Foyt has four of them. Michael Andretti wants one as a driver. Back here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, that is Townsend Bell on his warm-up lap. Tonight, we'll have a three-hour primetime special wrapping up everything that happened here on Pole Day at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And then tomorrow at 1 Eastern, it is Bump Day Telegast presented by Capital One on ABC at 1, and it continues on ESPN 2 at 5 p.m. Eastern. Here we go, Townsend Bell. As Tom Carnegie would say, he's on it. We basically on it right now just to try to be the top rookie, it looks like, Marty. I mean, uh, he's had a good qualifying lap a little while ago, 224. And some change, and he's going to go try to get this rookie. It seems kind of weird, though. A 31-year-old fellow. It just seems proper that Marco's supposed to get it at 19 years old, doesn't it, Scott? Well, some, it doesn't necessarily go by age. It goes by if you've ever raced here before. So, Rusty, you at your age would actually come over here and you would be a rookie even with all your success in this area. I know, Scott, but I wouldn't try to become a rookie at 49 years old and run the Indianapolis 500, that's for sure. Let's get more from Vince. You know, I asked Townsend Bell about the importance of being the fastest rookie, and he said, you know, that's not quite as important to me as the fact that it would be the simplest way to gain seven spots. It's easier to pass him in qualifying than it is in the race. Well, the time or speed he is trying to beat, a four-lap average set by Marco Andretti at 224.918. His first lap did not do it, 224.520. There is a nervous Marco. That is a nervous Marco. Good kid, man. That just uh, speaks well, good looking. From a great heritage, uh, it'd be a neat story to see him run good here at Indianapolis. Second lap, 224.409. Still not enough. Actually moved back a spot on the grid overall. Now, they talk about the rookie award. A lot of things come into play. Your starting position, your finishing position, a smile on Marco's face because he says, you know something? He's going slower the second lap. I think we'll be all right. Into turn three on lap three. Townsend Bell trying to squeeze out some more speed. He's right now in the middle of row number five. Marco's on the outside of row number three. Lap three, one to go. He 
comes across the strike, 224.267. I can tell you right now, it's not going to happen. Marco's going to stay number nine. Townsend is going to improve, but it's not going to be enough. I started to say, I saw Marco and uh, Michael down there celebrating and, and cheering and all that. I'm like, hey, until that fat lady sings, man, it's not all over. But with that 224.3, I think they can start smiling right now. But Townsend Bell will still improve his starting position because remember earlier today, his four lap average was 223.659. And uh, he comes down for the checkered flag. And it is 224.299. So he'll be on the outside of row number five, 224.374. That'll put him. 15th. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, Marco Andretti remains in that ninth position. How fast is your heart beating right now, Marco? Yeah, no, it, it was, and it just slowed down. For but uh, fortunately, you know, his uh, his run before that looked pretty solid. So, you know, maybe maybe there was some air out there helping him along. But you know, fortunately, I don't know. Fortunately, it didn't go as good for him. I'm sure he, he was upset, but uh, he's going to be tough. I mean, it, now it just comes down to the race. Yeah, well, welcome to the drama of the Indianapolis 500, right? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Nothing new. <laughs> Vince Welch? With Dario Franchitti, and Dario went out for a second qualifying attempt, came in and uh, promptly just tossed the steering wheel out of the car. I guess that was the indication you weren't happy with it. Yeah, well, um, I don't know what to say at this point. A team, you know, with the resources of Andretti Green Racing, and I include myself in this statement, we're lost. You know, we're, we're running around, we run at 224 and a half there. We came in, we changed tires, made a minor adjustment, and promptly lost a mile an hour. I have no idea where it went. Um, and um, you know, to qualify at the moment, we're 17th quick. It's it's very very poor show. Certainly disappointed now, but if there's a silver lining, remember the winner last year came from the 16th position. Yeah, but uh, a profound statement when a team talks about being lost. That means you have no idea where you're going. P.J. Jones out on the track now. No, he just got on the track first time yesterday, and uh, he's getting ready to make a qualifying attempt. Let's uh, check in with Jack Aru. Well, we talk about drama. How about the latest installment? And as the wheel turns between Roger Penske and Chip Ganassi, Ganassi just goes down to the Team Marlboro Pits and engaged Roger, the captain, into a conversation. And Penske said, what are you going to do? And Chip, very straight-faced, guys, said, what I'm going to do, we're going to go out and practice with my two cars here. And if we can go even faster than you, either of your two cars, we're going to put one of them back in line. Roger said, you're not serious, are you? Chip didn't answer him. <laughs> that chip's getting a little mad right now, isn't he? Hey, it's starting to heat up. I'm loving it, man. <laughs> All right. This is P.J. Jones coming to around the track as he is uh, working his uh, warm-up lap. We have 30 cars already qualified in the field. The slowest at 217.428. That's Stefan Gregoire. And P.J.'s on the green flag lap his first time. Well, 217.5 seems to be about the quickest that he's seen so far, so he's going to have to have something like Danica did, and that was the best run ever of the month, and put in the four best laps that he can to actually have a shot at actually getting into the field faster than the bump speed. Scott, you got to hand it to him, because I watched P.J. Jones yesterday start off at 184 miles per hour, Marty. He's picked this thing up to 217 now, and they basically said, okay, P.J., jump in the car. You're our driver now. See what you can do. That's a big gain from 184 miles an hour. He was getting out of the throttle way early getting in that corner just to try to get comfortable with this car right now he's coming up on the completion of lap number one he qualified 31st in his only other appearance in the indy 500 in 2004 and pj goes 216.131 and that would put him dead last in the field right now jack and root you've got more yeah, Marty, actually had hoped to have about a 221. That was what P.J. Jones was uh, shooting for when he started his practice efforts. But the sense of urgency as the time begins to wind down with just less than 20 minutes to go in, in first day pole position qualifying has forced them to maybe lower their estimations and try and get the car in today. Why? Because they need all day tomorrow on bump day to try and work some fuel loads and race setups. Strike to complete another lap in his qualifying effort, guys. And it is at 215.910, so it's slower. And there's a danger here, guys, because if he is the slowest qualifier at the end of today, we fill the field perhaps. We have enough cars with Madero scheduled to come back tomorrow to try and put his car in the show. 
If you're the slowest car, you could be out of here tomorrow. Absolutely. Remember, he will still have an opportunity to try and get himself back in the field tomorrow. He'll start tomorrow as a fresh day with three possible attempts on this car. But you're absolutely right. As a slowest, no matter where you are in the field and what day you qualified on, you will be the first person to be bumped out of the field. And uh, not a great feeling, I'm sure. No, that's an agonizing feeling. You have to go to bed with that on your mind. Third lap, 215.725, so progressively getting slower. And you can see the average, 215.922. And that is like two miles an hour slower than Stefan Gregoire. And you heard them talk about wanting to go off and do some full fuel runs that Jack Root was reporting about. And the reason is, is because they did not run last week. They've not had much time with this car. So their whole game plan is to turn around and get out there and start doing full tank runs. Fill it up with fuel, 30 gallons, and try and run it down to zero to see how the car reacts throughout that fuel load. Well, Marty, as I look down in the pit road right now, there's a lot of running around. I see Tony George down there getting anxious. I see uh, Ganassi's guys getting anxious. I see a lot of stuff going on down there. Well, he has completed the run, 215.816. He is 31st in the 31 cars that have qualified. A precarious position, to say the least. Let's check him again with J.B. Little. Well, Marty, amongst all this stress and tension that's going on on pit road, look at this. Tony Kanon, last year's pole sitter, $1,000. He takes it from the young Marco Andretti that just, you know, he had his heart beating to death. What are you doing, TK, taking money from your teammate? Rookie mistake. He bet against himself. I said, uh, he's going to win. The, definitely, we're pulling for him to win the rookie of the year in Indianapolis. And uh, 1,000 pulled up his car right there to try to beat him for the fastest rookie. And I said, I'll bet you he won't, he won't beat you. He goes, no, I'll bet you he's going to beat me. So we bet $1,000. I trust him more than himself right now. But uh, That's a pretty we, nice teammate. Way to go, but still you took the money. How about I take the money and run, boys? We're going to go potty. <laughs> hey, Jamie, tell, tell Kananda, you know, take that money and buy the kid a shaver because he doesn't have his shavers, shavers in his apartment we heard last weekend. Help the kid out. Hey, Rusty, he doesn't need a razor. That's the whole story. Yeah, but he's going to grow into it. He's growing into a race car driver, that's for sure. <laughs> and he just learned another lesson. Never bet against yourself because Kanan's going to keep that cash. Stay with us. Still more to come. We've got 17 minutes till the top of the hour. Pole day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the 90th running of the greatest spectacle in racing. It has been a very interesting day. We have 31 cars qualified for the field right now. And get into the driver's seat with IRL Racecast. You get real-time leaderboards, real-time car performance data, pit performance analysis, and so much more. All you have to do is log on to ESPN.com and then search Racecast. And we were uh, playing with it up here in the booth. Got to tell you, it is a lot of information. But I always click on the wrong thing and send us into oblivion. Let's check in with Vince Welch. Well, Townsend Bell is a, a happy man. He's in his first Indianapolis 500. Maybe he didn't get to the position you were looking for, but I told Townsend, I said, welcome to Indianapolis with all this drama. And he said, the track's crazier than the weather. How has the track changed today? I don't know if it's the track or if it's me or the car, but I'm just frustrated. You know, we, we uh, practiced this morning. We were looking really strong and uh, went out. We lost like two and a half miles an hour on our first qualifying run, and we were all scratching our heads. We went back, looked at the data. Everything looked okay, so when we came out, thought we'd practice again, make sure that everything was working. We were back like 225, 224, 9, and, and we thought, well, that'll be enough to jump us a row or two. Then we get back out there, and now we're, we're soft again. I was, had a hard time pulling fourth gear, and I'm just tripping out right now. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, we'll get to the bottom of it a little late now. The wife gave you a big kiss when you came in. How does it feel to be in your first Indianapolis 500? Oh, it's great. I, I think it's just fun, you know, to, to pull our time and take a chance. It's, uh, it's kind of one of the places that begs you to take chances on those kind of conditions. But for me, I was confident in the car. We just wanted to see if we can do a little better. We did, but not enough. Vision Racing took a chance with Townsend Bell, but Larry Curry tells me they will not take a chance with Thomas Schechter. All right. Well, he did pick up one starting spot. As you see, Ari Leyendijk Jr. getting pushed towards the tech line. So Ari may be ready to make his run into the field. And as we get ready to go to commercial break, there are the others that still have a chance to qualify. Don't go away. You're looking at Ari Leyendijk Jr. His father has won here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Ari is having his team push him into the tech line as he will get ready 
before a qualifying effort. Tonight, three hours, a primetime special. We'll wrap up the entire day, unfold all the drama for you here from Pole Day at the Indianapolis 500. Tomorrow, we'll start it off with our Indianapolis 500 Bump Day telecast presented by Capital One. You'll see it on ABC at 1 Eastern. And then the final tension on ESPN2 on Bump Day on Indianapolis at 5 o'clock Eastern. We're going to take another break, but as you can see, Ari's about to go. Here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the drama continues to build. You're looking at Scott Dixon and Target Chip Ganassi's teammate uh, is actually going to try and get into a yellow condition to go back out on the track and practice, guys. He and Dan Weldon want to get a couple of laps in these cars. If they like what they see, you won't see them stop here in their assigned pit. Instead, they will go all the way down to the entrance to the tech sled and put the cars back in line. That will be the key, though, what these next couple couple of laps will unfold in terms of speed, Jamie Little. But first, the track's got to go back to practice. And right now, it's not going back to practice anytime soon because Ari Leyendike Jr. has rolled in to the tech line. And his father right here, two-time Indianapolis 500 winner, Ari Leyendike, is here. We talked to you in this position last year. Your son was the only one that was bumped out of the field. What's going to be different this time around, Ari? Well, hopefully he'll have a full day tomorrow to practice some more. Uh, we, uh, we didn't have much track time today, didn't put in many laps at all. Had some trouble with the under tray uh, breaking apart and stuff like that. All, uh, you know, aftermath of the crash that he had on uh, Thursday. But uh, right now he just said, put me in line. Uh, I'll just use it as a practice session. So he, you know, he wasn't happy with the car just a little while ago, but he says uh, we made some changes and He's just it, going to give it a run because he can come back tomorrow and hopefully uh, with good weather run three more times if he has to. He hasn't had a whole lot of practice. I know, like you mentioned, there's been some problems with the car. How are his nerves at this point? Well, he's been pretty nervous uh, walking around, basically not being able to get in the car that much. But I told him, uh, you know, when you uh, put it in the wall, it has big consequences. What have you told him mentally to help him get over something like the crash from earlier this week that we're watching? Well, I just told him, you know, you have to stay calm. You have to uh, not lose your patience. So that's what I basically keep telling him because that's what this place does to you. It works on your nerves and you start pushing it when you're not supposed to. And then you get into trouble and it happens to the best of us. I mean, the last time I drove here, I put it in the wall because I was doing the same thing after all those years of experience. All right, Ari Leindyke has three poles here at Indianapolis. He knows what it takes to get it in the field. Guys? All right, thanks, Jamie. He also holds the track record. 1996 is four-lap average with a different engine package, 236.986. That was fast. Back here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where Ari Leindyke Jr. is on his warm-up laps as he attempts to become our 32nd of 33 qualifiers for the 90th running of the greatest spectacle in racing. He's got a lot of pressure on his kid right now. He wants to try to get it in today. His dad says he's got three more attempts tomorrow to use some practice, but still, he'd like to put a big number up today and get it over with. Well, the big goal for him right now, I think, Rusty, is to try and get a speed that is actually not the slowest speed in the field. So when he goes away from here tonight, he knows that if there's going to be any bumping tomorrow, he will not be the first one, which is exactly what happened last year. Well, he needs to get some confidence in the racetrack, too, Scott. I was talking to his dad a little earlier, and the kid was so mad the other night. He says, I hate this racetrack. I don't like it. And old man says, you need to start liking this track. Well, I'll tell you what, his warm-up lap, only two. 110 miles an hour that's not showing us a lot no there's a big stretch between that if that's their speed for the warm-up lap and trying to find 217 218 that's a hard task right now you want need to carry momentum as soon as you leave the pit lane just really stretch the rpms in each gear to start to build that momentum up and keep the momentum going all the way through those first two laps of warm-up and then hopefully hold your foot flat in all the way through the next four you're right scott he hasn't had to practice near enough practice like you like to have and after you back to singing the wall one time you do get a little spook especially when you're running close to 220 some mile an hour in the straight away. well guys uh 216.419 on the first lap that would put him on the inside of the last row and would keep the 98 of P.J. Jones in that most precarious last position. And that tells you from his warm-up lap to there, he pushed the brave button. He kept his foot on the gas, Rusty. <laughs> I think his dad made him mad and he stood on the throttle got after it. Into turn three, now into the sh north chute. 
Coming out of turn four. He knows anything about his line? Nice lines. His father always had some of the best lines around here. The speed came so easily for Ari Sr. There's quite a few people here that can do that. Ari Sr., Rick Mears, guys like that were just around this place effortlessly. Well, 216.38, that's an ind indication. They got some downforce screwed on this car. He hasn't backed up in the second lap at all. 216.41 the first lap, 216.38 the second lap. So he's got some more confidence, evidently, to keep the same speed going. Down the back straightaway into turn number three. Lap three of four. Did you ever count how many times you actually breathe? You know, the, the biggest thing that I always did is when I came down for the green, I was actually coming out of four, starting to take some big breaths because the first lap going into turn one, you actually have to turn the car in so smooth, and that seems to set the tone for the Rex 4. Another lap at 216.4, so very consistent laps, and it keeps him on the inside of the last row and keeps P.J. Jones in that precarious last position. Well, I didn't really expect him to pick up again on the third lap. He's picked up a little bit there, so he's feeling pretty comfortable with the car. One more lap to go for him, and I'll tell you more. That's not a bad attempt for this fellow. Into turn three for the final time. On to the front straightaway. He'll take the checkered flag, and Ari Leyendike Jr., his fourth lap at 216.162. So his four lap average, 216.352. And he will be on the inside of row 11. And that means PJ Jones is our slowest qualifier of the 32 that have gone today. All right, as we uh, take a look at the front row, there is no one else in the qualifying line, and we have roughly just a couple of minutes. So it looks like this is going to hold up. Sam Hornish is going to be his first pole here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as soon as the gun is fired. You see his teammate, Elio Castroneves, and then Dan Weldon rounding out the front row. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Sam Hornish just seconds away from your first pole position here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Can you describe the feeling? It's a pretty good day. Um, yeah, we've been real, uh, real happy with the car all month long, and hopefully we'll be happy with it next Sunday too. And see, uh, best day of my life here at the Speedway, anyhow. The beginning of your relationship with Roger Penske, certain promises were made by the captain to you. What were they? He said the first thing we got to do is win you the 500. So I want to win it as bad for him as I do for myself, and. Uh, you know, he doesn't have anything to prove to me. I got everything to prove to him. So we'll just go out there, keep working together, and hopefully this will be the year. If not, we'll come back next year and see if we can do it. Fellas, forget about Mission Impossible. This could very well be Mission Possible for Team Penske. Well, it's the 13th poll for Roger Penske, the first for Sam Hornish. Take a look through the top 10 on down where uh, Andretti Green has Tony Kanan leading their charge in the number five spot. Koski Matsura still in the top 10. He's been quietly effective all throughout the month of May. Here's the second page. Ed Carpenter through Jeff Bucknam through positions 12 through 22. Carpenter with a very strong run ahead of Michael Andretti. And there's Larry Foyt leading us to P.J. Jones with one spot remaining. And that will be filled tomorrow. And then the bumping will begin. And you will see it all tomorrow from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's talk about what's coming up in just one hour, a complete three-hour primetime special, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on ESPN. There's Chip Ganassi. Didn't get what he really wanted, but he's all right. Roger Penske got what he wanted. His guys are starting numbers one and two. Danica Patrick will be in the number 10 spot. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up next, it's Sports Center. And we'll be back at 7 o'clock with our three-hour primetime special. We'll see you then.